Okay, pre-calculus, this is the first video in the sequences and series unit. It's uh, usually unit 10. It says 11.1, .1, but I believe it's unit 10. So a sequence is a function whose domain, or you can call it or all the numbers, it's a set of all positive numbers. So for the first type of, for, for example, one, um, it says write the first six terms of the sequence. So we're just going to go ahead and follow the formula. So if I plug in 1 here for n, for the first term, a sub 1, and plug in 1 minus 1 over 1, I'm going to get 0 over 1. So go to the next one, 2. If I plug in 2 minus 1 over 2, I get 1 half. If I plug in 3 minus 1 over 2, I get 2 thirds. If I get 4 minus 1 over 4, I get 3 fourths. 5 minus 1 over 5, I get 4 fifths. And the last one, 6 minus 1 over 5, I get 5 sixths. So they're asking to write the first six terms. So how they want the answer to be written is like this. 0, 1 half, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, 4 fifths, and 5 sixths. Like that. Easy peasy. Try the next one, on the next two on your own. Press pause. Don't look at it and try them. So the first one, okay, so you've already done it. So the first one, if you're plugging in 1, everywhere you see n, 1 plus 1, the, the, new, the ex, <laughs> exponent should be a 2. When you square a negative, a negative times a negative, that ends up being a positive. So that's uh, times 2 is 2. So, um, but when you square, you've got a negative here and you cube a negative, that's a negative times a negative times a negative. This ends up being making this a negative value. So that's why that happens. And these um, signs are positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And then for C, this is, you got to be careful because when N, you're going to use this function if N is even and this one if N is odd. Um, and we went back to piecewise functions. This is really similar. So when N is um, e odd, so here, C sub 1, um, and is odd, you're going to use 1 over 1. But now, for the second one, n is even, so you're just going to plug it into this one right here and do n. And then for the third one, where n is 3, you're going to plug it into the second one, 1 over n, and so on. So those are your answers. And there's your sequence. For example 2, I think this is probably the hardest type of problem in the section, determining the sequence of the pattern. So if you take a look at what the values for n are, so n equals, in the first term it's 1, second term it's 2, 3, and 4. You have to look for a pattern. Well, for this one, this one's pretty simple. You can see that the exponent is n for this e, and the denominator is also an n. So the way we write that is a sub n equals e to the n over n. Because every time we have, if I plug in, if n is, uh, like let's say it's 3, it's a sub 3, the third term is going to be e to the third over 3. And the fourth term is going to be e to the fourth over 4. It does get more complicated though. So when I look at the second one here, I say, all right, well, what's happening with these numbers here? I've got a 3, and then I've got a 9, which is 3 squared, and I've got a 27, which is 3 cubed. If you can see that pattern, then you might be able to see that it's 1 over 3, but the exponent is 1 less than n. So here, the exponent, ooh, the exponent for 3 squared is a 2, but n value is a 3, so the exponent is 3, uh, n minus 1. Let's move on to some practice. So let's see if you can do some of these. I think the most difficult one is this C coming up right here. Um, and sometimes you'll, you, sometimes there's more than one answer. Okay. So, but this is just, these are examples. So if you notice where N is two here, so, and then the term is three, when N is three, the term is five. Well, if I were to multiply each of these N's by two and then take away one, I would get the term value. So how do I write that as a formula? A sub N equals two 
times n and then minus 1. And you can write that if you'd like as 2n minus 1, same thing. Um, all right, the next one is, it's just going to be n squared. So we write that a sub n equals n squared. And then for the last one here, we notice that our denominator is n and the sign is changing. So let's take care of the sign changing first in the front. So anytime we have, um, let's see, an n value, oof, oh, try that again. For the n values um, that are even, what's happening is the sign is a negative. So I'm going to need to take my n value and take away 1 and then multiply it by negative 1. Because what happens is if, if I plug in, for example, 2 here, 2 minus 1 is 1. This gives me 1, negative 1. It makes this term a negative. However, if I plug in a 3 here, it's going to make this exponent squared, and that's going to make this negative 1 times negative 1 positive, which is going to be a positive value. That's what we need. So that's the first part. And the second part is pretty simple because we notice that the denominator is the same as n, so it's just 1 over n. So moving on to factorials. If n is greater than 0 um, is an integer, and the factorial symbol is n and then the explanation point. It's defined as, now this is just a definition um, that <laughs> zero factorial equals one. It, just memorize it. It's really the only thing that works because if one factorial equals one times zero factorial, zero factorial has to be equal to one. What does factorial mean? It just means multiply that number times every uh, whole number below it. And that's it. So 5 factorial is just 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Um, okay, so let's practice. So, okay, oh, recursive formulas. Uh, so a way of defining the next term of a sequence, you might have heard the word recursive before, um, is when you, you take um, a, a formula and you apply it over and over again. But for uh, recursive formulas in math, they have to give you an initial value for one of some term. And then they have to give you a formula involving that value. So if s sub 1 is 1, then s sub n is 4 s sub n minus 1. So what's s sub 2? Okay, well, it's going to be 4 s sub n minus 1, which is one less than two, which we already, they already told us is one. So we take that one and plug it in here and that's it, four. Then for S sub three, it's four times the previous one, S sub two, which we know we just learned is four. So that's going to be 16. And so S sub four is four times 16 and that's 64. And then S sub 5 is 4 times 64. I'm just following the formula, and that's 256. And then it does ask to write the first five terms. Um, uh, yeah, there we go. So that's how they want them written. So try the next one, and then pa like, pause it, and, see, and then check your answer and see how you do. So that's that one. Um, also try this one. So hide it. Don't look at it. Try it. See, see how you do. Because they gave you two terms there. All right. So let's go to the calculator. Sum of a sequence. To find the sum of the first terms, n terms, um, of a sequence, we can use this summation formula. So on the calc, you're going to do this by hand, but it's so much easier on the calculator, and you're always going to have a calculator. So let me show you how to do this. What this means is... We're going to go from k is from 1 to 5, and it doesn't matter what variable it is. They use all different sorts of variables. Sometimes they use k, sometimes they use i, sometimes they use x. I use x on the calculator because x is just the easy variable to, to use on the calculator. But what this means is we're going to put in 1, okay, 1 for k, and then 2 for k, and then 3, and then 4, and then 5, and stop. And we're going to add them all up. The calculator can do that for you. If you go to, and you're going to use this alpha window and then number two so i think i might have already had this done so yeah second plus seven one two all right so if i go alpha window and then option two which you'll see is summation 
And you can use whatever variable. I usually just use X. Even if they use a K, I just put X because it's easiest. I'm going from one to, I believe, five. And what was the formula? One over K. Where do I go? Here, one over K. So I'm going to do, I like to use um, second Y equal. No, that's not right. There we go. So, no, alpha y equals, oh my gosh, there it is. All right, let me go clear, clear, go away. <laughs> I clicked on so much stuff. All right, alpha y equals. This changes it from, um, into a fraction. So option one. Oh my gosh, why? I have no life. Okay. <laughs> Let's just start over. Alpha window summation x from 1 to 5. I go inside the parentheses. I do alpha y equals. I, sol I make it a fraction. And then I put a 1 in over whatever the variable is. In this case, it's x, x, and then you have to get outside the parentheses and then you click enter and it does it for you. You can do that by hand if you'd like, but it's so much easier on the calculator and that will give it to you. So you can find, you can add all these fractions up by hand if you'd like, or, you know, but, or you can use it in the calculator, but if you throw it in the calculator and do summation so much, so much faster. So for the factorial ones, and you're going here from three to six to find the factorial. This is three factorial plus four factorial plus five. And what this means is three, mm, three times two times one plus four times three times two times one plus five times three, five times four times three times two times one plus six times five times four times three times two times one. Okay. Yeah, we can do all that. Or we can just go over to our calculator and do alpha window summation x from 3, shoot, was it to 6 or was it 5? My memory is so bad these days. From 6 to 6. 6. And then we changed x, the k to x, right? So that's k. And then factorial, and I showed you where it is here. If you go to math probability, it's option four. So math probability, so you arrow over to probability, option four, and then make sure that's inside the parentheses because otherwise, even if something is squared, don't put the square on the outside of the parentheses, you will get the wrong answer. I learned that the hard way. So I'm getting 870. And then I go back to the problem and I could have done this all by hand. If I wanted to, I could have multiplied this out, multiply this, or I could have typed this all in the calculator. Okay. But showing you easiest way to do these problems. So try these next two problems and see if you can do them when you're, you basically have to write the summation. Sometimes they'll give you the summation like these that we just did. And sometimes you have to write it. So this one clearly goes from one to nine from one to nine, see the dot, 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 plus dot, 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 up to nine, just from one to nine. And then what, what are we dealing with here? It looks like K squared. So you should get 285 if you type it in correctly. Put the squared on the inside of those parentheses. This parentheses has to include that whole um, expression. And the last one, here for this type of problem. Wait, pause. The first thing you want to do is look at the end value. So this goes from one, two, three, four, five, six, and it, it's going to go up to seven, right? It goes from four to seven. All right. So that, and, and I'm just using I here because I'm just trying to show you that there are different variables. It doesn't matter. Okay. And it goes from one to seven. Now this is the hard part. If you notice for, uh, my phone's ringing. Why? Why is it ringing right now? For the I value, it's one less. This, the exponent is a one. This exponent is two squared. This is three squared, two cubed. You're going to notice that 
the n value is one less in the exponent.